So every time I do use PC parts hunts here on the channel, people complain that they can't get the deals that I can get. But right here on the table, we've got something that is readily available and hopes to be some of the best value I've seen in a long time. For instance, I got a motherboard here and yes, that is how the motherboard came in the mail. I guess the postman uh, had a little bit too much fun here. We got this for $49. Now it's LGA 1156, that's right, not 1366, which is X58. It's actually a special breed of motherboard that supports Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge chips, which were made specifically for this motherboard. They were mainly intended for small businesses and servers that only needed one computer and didn't need to link up more than one CPU since they are limited to a QPI link of one. And then besides that, the benefit of this is it supports registered memory, which can be had for very cheap. I picked up two sticks of eight gigabytes each for a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory for $35. And the CPU itself is the E5 2620 V2, which is a six core, 12 threaded Xeon on the Ivy Bridge architecture that also supports PCIe 3. Then for the CPU cooler, 12 bucks, has a fan on it, has two little towers, and uh, hopefully it can keep this thing under wraps, but I don't think it should be a problem since it is non-overclockable and it is pretty efficient already. But then we're gonna couple that with a GTX 1660, which is one of the better value cards from Nvidia on their new series, and see how that compares then at 1080p gaming versus a 9900K. So with all that aside, let's get our $121 bare bones kit on the test bench and see how it performs. So there's a little bit of trouble here in paradise and one of these two sticks is faulty and I thought at first it was the motherboard when I tried booting up the motherboard it just kept giving me an error upon Windows installation uh, but then I changed the memory around finally and everything is working absolutely fine we're just getting games installed right now uh, but one thing about this motherboard is it doesn't look too bad so far I mean in the BIOS you can even set the uh, RAM speeds up to 1866 megahertz which isn't too bad. And also this cooler seems to have a bit of RGB bling going on inside. So let's get on with the gaming results and then come back to some other tests on this system directly. So we just finished up the testing and I'm going to say before we move into the numbers, I am super impressed. This is a new meta going into 2019 for people who want budget builds or budget gaming and it's readily available and they live anywhere in the world. This is definitely going to deliver LGA 1356 plus this 2420 V2 Xeon and 16 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, whether it's registered or not, is going to be kicking hard for the money. Now the motherboard itself, it costs $48. So it's going to complement that $24 CPU. And since we can then couple it with that cheap cooler, which is $12 and also the cheap memory, we got ourselves a combo that will handle a GTX 1660. And we'll get into the numbers here and a 1080p high settings gaming, Battlefield 5 on the single player was getting around 89 average FPS when we did over a 70 second benchmark. 40 FPS 1% lows and the 0.1% lows did dip to 10. But I'd have to say that I had to do with the fact that we used a hard drive here since the game was still downloading in the background. Moving over to Apex Legends, we saw a 100 average FPS on the dot and then the 1% lows were 65 and the 0.1% lows were 43 FPS. This was a 1080p pretty much max settings except the texture setting which was on four gigabytes, which is still high. Then uh, onto CSGO, we had 1080p high settings here, max settings going 166 FPS 
on the community made benchmark 57 fps 1% lows and then 10.1% lows moving over to tomb raider the last game we started to test we ran the benchmark 1080p high settings dx12 68 fps and then the minimum scored in at 47 fps so the whole time across these four games except for csgo the other three we saw the gpu being utilized over 90 percent which was a really good thing considering how cheap this combo is now taking a quick step back with this platform i didn't even know this existed i mean i may have heard of it in the past but i never really paid any attention to it because when i heard lga 1356 i thought oh okay is that LGA 1366, just a different variant, but it's actually an improvement on 1366 in the server market where it still carried on the triple channel memory, but it was then supported for Ivy Bridge and also Sandy Bridge. And in the case of Ivy Bridge CPUs, it had 24 PCIe 3.0 lanes, and that was sort of different to the uh, 2011 socket, as you know, with things like X79, which supported 40 PCIe lanes, but also had the QPI score of one. So you could interlink two CPUs together to get double cores, double threads. But I do see motherboards out there that do have two CPU sockets. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but in the case of the motherboard that we got here today, it was only $48, which is brand new, and that includes shipping and it was using a H61 license. So it wasn't actually using X79 like it says on the box. It's actually using H61, which is very cheap to get and also has dual channel memory support maximum. As we can clearly see on the board itself, only having two DIMM slots available. Now the VRM, of course, it does look a little bit lackluster, but since we are only pushing 36 watts through it, it did do absolutely fine, even with no heat sink. And at 25 degrees ambience, we saw it going up to a maximum of 60 degrees with the thermo imaging camera. So there it is with this combo. I think it's phenomenal value for money considering we're getting the whole kit here for 121 USD, which is really cheap. All we'd have to do to get this build fully finished is add an SSD or a hard drive, case, power supply, and our graphics card. And in the case of the graphics cards itself, you can use an RX 570, great value for money on the used market, the new market. It would go very well with this combination to get a really good build, even brand new, under 300 USD. If you guys wanna see that happen, I'll make a build happen using these components. I think it's just phenomenal value for money. I'm super excited that I found out about this and it's really good. I think it's going to be a new meta where a lot of used businesses will now be retiring these Xeons. There's just gonna be a flood of them in the market and at $24, I think it's going to be very hard to beat this kind of value. I did manage to run also a Cinebench R15 score and we got over 600 points, which again for $24, buy it now, is freaking amazing value for money. I can't harp on about how good the price performance is with this combination. Now, another good thing is with the low clock speeds in the six cores, 12 threads, is you do get the low power consumption, but also on top of that, a lot of games are coming in with DX12 and supporting more cores and more threads. And we can see that the gameplay is very smooth. And if we couple it with something like an RX 570, or if you wanna go with a new GTX 1660, then a combination like this is gonna be absolutely fine. Also in the case of the memory being faulty, that's just one of those things that happens when you buy either used or new parts. In the case of DDR4 memory, if you buy that new, can sometimes be faulty. In this case, it was used memory, and I'm pretty sure the seller should have tested this before they sent it out, as it's pretty clear that it's not just like weird randomness faulty. That's clearly faulty when I'm trying to install Windows, and it's failing before it can even install Windows itself. Anyway, there's probably a lot more you could do with this CPU in combination, like make a home server or a NAS. But if you're making a NAS, do keep in mind it's only got three SATA ports on this particular board. And I've never heard the brand name before, East Vita. So uh, everything did check out though when I was playing games and it's just really phenomenal value for money. I can't bring that home enough. And with that said, I'll leave all the links for the stuff that I bought for this video in the description below. If you guys have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop them in the comment section below. And also don't forget to hit that like button if you like that used Xeon Meta in 2019. With that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you're enjoying this one and you're enjoying all the videos around here, don't forget to hit that sub button with the bell notification or check us out on Instagram, Tech yes City, for the inside scoop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.